In theory, a trail bike should be that do-it-all, quiver-killer machine that's just as happy lapping trail centre loops at warp speed as it is tackling nadgery technical descents, combining near-enduro-ready attitude with absorbingly playful trail manners on flatter terrain and being no slouch on the climbs either. And of course, it should be good value for money too. None of the bikes in this year's top three tick every one of those boxes, but they're all class leaders in at least one of those respects. While my top three don't quite represent the full trail bike spectrum, which also encompasses lighter, shorter travel machines, between them the £4,099 white T140 RS, Vitas Escarpe CRS at a penny under £3,200, and Merida's 3100 quid 140 700 give a pretty good snapshot of the category. As ever, thanks to all of our sponsors for helping us on this year's Bike of the Year test. Which one went on to become my precious one ride to rule them all? Time to find out. But first, subscribe to the channel if you like independent reviews. First off, we have the white T140 RS, which is perhaps the most archetypal trail bike here. With 135mm of rear wheel travel, it nestles neatly between the short travel ripper and long travel shredder, especially when paired with a 140mm fork. As we've come to expect from the British brand, the geometry is modern with a lengthy front end designed to deliver high speed composure over rocks and roots, paired with a stubby stem to quicken handling between the trees. What goes down has to go up, and despite its clear descending intentions, climbing on the T140 is fuss free. The rear suspension doesn't bob noticeably under power when seated, yet its supple early stroke, especially with the Fox Float DPS shock left fully open, allows the Maxxis Dissector rear tyre to dig in and grip tenaciously. The seated position is good, with the 76.9 degree seat chip angle only feeling slack in comparison to the Merida's ultra steep angle. With 30% sag for optimum traction, the bike can feel a bit lazy on the steepest climbs, but reduce that to 25% and it feels good and the dissector rolls pretty well to boot. Stand up and pedal and there's little bob, but the shock's compression lever is within easy reach. As to be expected from white, when pointed downhill, the overall feel of the T140 is of silent competence. The bike is quiet and rattle-free, while the suspension has a damped but not harsh feel which smooths away with minimal fuss. When setting that 25-30% to sag window, it deftly controls impacts through the wheels before they make their way to the bars and pedals. The long 1250mm wheelbase of my large test bike works with the suspension to calm fore aft pitching, while the rear end soaks up hits big and small with ease. Up front you get a 140mm Fox 34 Performance Elite Fork with a top spec Grip 2 damper. I've been critical of the 34 in the past, but this one on my test bike was smooth, comfortable and well controlled. The Grip 2 is a definite improvement on the Fit4 damper previously found in Fox's top 34 forks and it's all the better for it. The rear end encourages you to push the bike harder on technical trails, at which point heavier or faster riders may find themselves pushing the fork towards its limits. On bigger impacts I managed to bottom it out a number of times and the 34mm chassis can get a bit squirrely under heavy braking. It leaves me wondering if Fox's 36 would be a slightly better fit. In its slacker setting, the white 64.7 degree head angle and the ground scraping 330mm BB height combine to help it carve through terms with a plomb. Flat corners or well supported berms, the T140 RS is equally adept at both. I found it very easy to weight the front wheels and get the tyres biting into the dirt, helped by the fact that the wheels are shod with some great rubber. Maxxis's Minion DHF front tyre is the legend it is for good reason with decent rolling characteristics that don't detract from serious grip on a wide range of surfaces. Despite the lack of a reservoir, the Performance Elite Series Fox Shock lets you push hard and downhill control is stellar for an all-rounder design. The Dissector rear tyre is a smart pick, blending decent rolling speed with ample bite when the going gets tough. White's product managers have also specced it with a thicker XO Plus casing, showing that they understand what the modern trail rider really needs. SRAM supplies the bike stop and go kit, and it all sinks neatly on the bar thanks to their matchmaker clamps, giving a clean look to the cockpit. While Shimano's mechanical shifting has the edge over SRAM's when squeaky clean, the US brand's kit feels better when coated in good old UK mud. 
The G2R brakes though can't quite match the equivalent Shimano stoppers, lacking a little in outright power. Overall, the white T140 RS is the best all-rounder here, but despite that, it isn't my winner. It's a reliable companion on longer days out with big climbs and thanks to its reassuringly composed suspension, doesn't throw the proverbial toys out of the pram when you're tackling more technical tracks. The limited sizes available are one of my few bugbears and help hold it back from bagging top spot. If it's pure descending capability you want, without the heft of an Enduro bike, you should cast an eye over the Vitus Escarpe. The CRS model might come in at the cheaper end of my test, but still packs a punch in the spec department. This is thanks to the Northern Ireland based brand's online only sales model. First up, unlike the white and the Merida, it has a carbon fibre frame. While arguments rage as to what benefits that really brings over alloy, it's generally no bad thing. Carbon frames have the potential to be made lighter, sleeker looking and give a smoother, more damped ride feel, although this isn't always the case in reality. Then there are the killer components bolted to the Vitus. A RockShox Lyric fork, full Shimano SLX drivetrain and brakes, nuke-proof Neutron wheels and Maxxis rubber, with a descent-friendly ExoPlus carcass at the rear. In short, it's a stonking, value-packed build with kit picked to complement the bike's descending capability. First though, I'll start with the climbing, and to get the best out of the Vitus, you've got to take a sit and spin approach. Start pedaling a little more enthusiastically, and rear suspension movement begins to rob you of power and make upward progress a little less efficient than the other bikes here. That's not to say it's akin to hauling a super enduro bike uphill, but for all round versatility, this scarp may not be the best choice. However, that willingness for the rear suspension to move does mean traction levels are high, with the Maxxis Dissector tyre really able to claw its way up pretty much anything. While you might not get many KOMs, this scarp has a comfortable climbing position to pedal away on. A steep 77 and a bit degree seat tube angle made steeper still on larger frame sizes to ensure bigger riders maintain an effective position over the cranks, and a roomy front end that ensures you don't feel cramped or help. If you want to eke out a touch more technical climb performance, a flip chip lets you steepen the angles and raise the BB a touch. Downhill is where the Vitus really shines though. I found the bike excelled with around 30% sag. Set up like this, the rear suspension is incredibly supple, soaking up anything the trail throws at you. High frequency chatter disappears under the broad tyres mounted onto wide rims, while repeated medium sized hits are controlled well by the mid soak support from the shock. This helps the Vitus feel like it has more than the 140mm travel it actually has, further enforcing the feeling that this is a bike built to descend. Up front, the 150mm travel 35mm stanchion Lyric Select fork feels truly unshakable and doesn't allow any harshness to work its way through to the bar. Drop the bike into steep terrain and it's all good there too. The four piston SLX front brake is powerful and the suspension is nicely supportive and active. There's no doubt that the value offered here is exceptional, but I did identify a couple of areas where costs may have been saved which may have affected the performance. The two-piston SLX rear brake has enough grunt to do its job, but I'd love to see a four-piston model to match the front. Also, the bike is more rattly than some which can be distracting and mud clearance could be improved at the rear. These are small niggles in the grand scheme of things though, and the Vitus continually impressed me with its descending prowess. Well done for making it this far, and by a process of elimination, it's clear that the Merida 140 700 takes top honours in this year's Trail Bike of the Year test. The Taiwanese brand is huge, even making bikes for other manufacturers, but their bikes are perhaps not at the top of everyone's shopping list, as they haven't always wowed in the past. This year's 140 shows they should be on more people's radars though. The 700 is the top alloy framed 140 and comes with a parts package that, while not especially bling, delivers on the trail. While it's not quite as big a bargain as the Vitus, the Merida is still exceptional value, given that you can walk into a bricks and mortar shop to buy it with all the advantages that entails. You get 143mm of rear wheel travel paired with a 150mm Mazzocchi Z1 fork. That alone might not get your blood rushing, but the geometry most definitely should. If you take the long size to be equivalent to a large from another brand, then the 140 has the most radical geometry on test. 
The 509 mm reach dwarfs anything else here, while the 80.5 degree seat tube angle is one of the steepest I've ever measured. The 65 degree head angle might not be quite as progressive as other measurements, but that enormous reach number makes up for it in the stability stakes. If you're not a fan of long bikes, you can always size down. The mid sizes 480 mm reach would put it right in line with the other bikes here, and saddle height shouldn't be an issue thanks to Merida's own brand dropper post. You can adjust the drop length of the post from a tiny 30 mm to a whopping 230, although the mechanism is a little clunky in use. Pointed towards the summit, the Merida stood out as the class leader. I had to check if the shock was locked out as all but the most wonky and square of pedalling strokes delivers a rock solid feel under power, making it the most efficient here at gaining altitude. Even on tarmac, the lockout is pretty much redundant. Despite this firm feel, the 140 barely falters on technical climbs. As with the other bikes equipped with the Dissector Outback, traction is good with only marginally more lurch over steps than the white. With ample top tube length and a steep seat tube angle, there's plenty of space to move over the cranks to maximise grip. Moving on to the descents, the Merida continues to impress too. That long reach, moderately slack head angle, decent rubber and plush burly fork give the 140 commanding performance. The 140 can be a point and shoot kind of bike, spying the exit of a section and letting the suspension and tyres do the rest. Or you can choose to hop over a route and slither through some S-bends and it will massage your ego with its deft agility. That same suspension support that helps propel the Merida uphill gives you a platform to push against elsewhere, so speed can be generated with ease and lips can be sent as far as you dare. This does mean the 140 isn't quite as silky smooth in the rough as the Vitas, but given its geometry and the rubber wrapped around its rims, you're unlikely to come unstuck. Find yourself dropping into the steeps and you're in safe hands. The front wheel is far ahead of your weight, so it feels like you can drop into anything, and the 203mm rotors at both ends are each squeezed by punchy four-piston SLX brakes. A mixed Shimano drivetrain largely based around SLX running gear, but I'm pleased to say including an upgraded XT shifter provides crisp gear changes, while race face effect cranks add a little Canadian curb appeal over the Shimano alternative. There's really very little to complain about with the 140. The grips weren't quite to my taste though, and I soon swapped the 50mm stem for a more responsive 40mm one, which enhanced the already impressive handling. But that's about it. I say this every year, but choosing the winner this time round really was a toughie. The white T140 RS is a true all-rounder trail bike, exhibiting calm and composed feel on a wide range of tracks. However, its limited sizing and higher price meant the Vitus Escarp CRS pipped it into second place. The bike is a descender's dream, supremely comfortable, utterly capable and cracking value for the money. It didn't take long to award the overall win to the Merida 140 700 though. A trail bike has to climb with the best and descend as well as anything, and the 140 arguably does both better than any other bike here, while also offering excellent value for your hard-earned cash, making it the winner of Trail Bike of the Year 2023. But what did you think of my choice? Be sure to let me know in the comments, and if you want to see more Bike of the Year content, check out this video.